G'day, okay, I've made myself a woodworking bench. Um, please enjoy the video. Stick around at the end, I'll just have a yak about some of the bits and pieces and what's to come in the future. Thanks very much for watching. Appreciate everyone that subscribed and helped me with this whole YouTube-y thingy. All right, here we go. So what I'm gonna do is base my workbench off Cuffy's Woodwork Aussie Ocker Workbench. It is an amazing piece of craftsmanship. It's definitely gonna have some differences and it's also gonna have my spin on it. For the framework, I managed to pick up all this reclaimed decking. Now, I've already cleaned all this stuff up um, with all the pieces I need, and I've even started to glue together some of the stock to make some nice big chunky legs. The biggest difference is I'm not going to do the angled legs. I'm going to go with square legs because then I can check square. Here we go, check square, check square, check square, check square. All right, you'll have to take my word for it that I've uh, chiseled all these mortises out. No one needs to see me do that. Um, it's not pretty. I'm using the spiral upcut bit again to cut the groove for the sliding dead man. I've just placed two pieces of stock together just to make it more stable and have less whoops of daisies, which there was a few. Okay, uh, this is the draw boring technique. So the gist of it is you need to pre-drill all your holes um, you then do a dry fit um, and then mark out those holes on the tenon, just like this. And then the gist of it is you just offset your the holes for the tenon. So what will happen is when you bang in the dowels, they are going to act like a clamp, if you will, and it's going to draw or pull those two pieces, the mortise and tenon, together nice and tight. So it's pretty cool and it worked quite well uh, don't worry about all that glue i went for the wrong hole and uh, that instant holy dooly we're checking square and i wasn't even ready Holy shit! Oh. Jeez, unbelievable. You dickhead. That could have been the world's biggest disaster with one set of tenants pointing to the sky and one to the ground. Anyway, recovered. Okay, let's check square, check square, check square. And again, check square up here, there, there, and there. I'm pretty confident Woo. we've got them. She's square. It was at this point I realised that you could just use a sharpener to put a little curve on your dowels instead of a belt sander. There you go. Okay, just banging some dowels in. Please stick around at the end for some confessions. There will be a couple. Okay, I'm cutting a dovetail here for my cross piece. Now, traditionally, probably all meant to be done by hand, but I'm replicating with table saws tenon jigs and all that sort of good stuff. A little bit of chisel action um, and the spiral upcut bit, that'll get a go again as well. But the point was was to get this brace in, 
so it's nice and strong. We can get onto the hand skills later on as I get better at this little woodworking business. I tell you though, taking the time to learn how and sharpen my chisels properly um, really was a game changer for me on this project. Sliding Dead Man, I've put out a video on this one. Link's up there. Go and have a look at that if you want to see how I made this part. Also, uh, just a quick little montage on some of the work that went into making the slab. I'm actually going to bust this down into a full video next week, which will be a more how to make a slab again, because this one, it's pretty massive and it sucked up a fair bit of video footage. So I'm just going to separate that one. If anyone's interested, tune in next week. So I've got these leftover pallet laminations. What I'm gonna do is fix them inside here so I've got a kickboard. I hate stuff that flows underneath my workspaces. So although you'll hardly ever see it, I just think using the pallet laminations adds to the uh, whole recycling effort. Okay. It's a beautiful thing. Alrighty. Move, move out. Merbo, Merbo. I got this Merbo, it's actually decking timber, but it came off a mate's fence, so pretty unreal fence if you ask me. Um, anyway, I'm gonna use that for easy. I'm going to use this for my bottom shelf. So it really only needs a quick sand. So giddy up. Okay, so I can't throw away any of this stuff. It's far too valuable to me. Um, now, I have got plans for it in the future, but the buckets of these stuff are always in the way. So I'm just gonna hide it away under here, okay? You just need the secret key to lift up the deck. Couple of screws this is the combination and you're in just like that. I don't know why I'm sorting it. I'm gonna keep it all. So I'm gonna stop filming. Again, this is just a quick little montage to show you how the slabs are coming along, show you the size and how I wheeled them in the shop um, and how I basically got them to usable, massive pieces of timber. I decided to give this plunging technique a go at, uh, this time with the spiral upcut bit and I found it far more controllable than running passes backwards and forwards uh, when you got a bit tired or lazy you had sometimes have a little slip of the old route a bit uh, with the plunge it's very controlled on each one and then when you do slide back and forth there's not a lot of material so less chance for it to grab and make a meal of your tenant sorry your mortise your mortise all right this move is patented um so just try not to use it if you haven't got permission okay Rightio, putting a chamfer on these massive slabs. Holy dooly, I loved it. It was 
It was the best. All right, we're getting there. No need to explain what's going on here. We're drilling dog holes. That's what we're doing, dog holes. I'm actually a little sad that the finish is going on because this project's come to an end. Um, it has been so much fun. Okay, alrighty, so finish has just gone on. Uh, I just want to give another shout out to Cuppy's Woodwork. I bought his plans. What these plans have done for me is just help me along the way, help me think about all the bits and pieces. I think I would have made a hell of a lot more mistakes if I didn't have such detailed drawings um, to go by. So this workbench is now for me very usable. There still are lots of little bits and pieces that I'm gonna do along the way when I get the time. Uh, for instance, this how's your father thing, whatever that's called that goes in the middle to hold the tools. I wanna to put one of those in. Uh, it'll eventually get a tail vise. That'll probably be the last thing I do. Um, what I do need to get is a face vise down this end because I do use that a fair bit. I've actually purchased the John Hines plans for his twin screw vise. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you'll see that one uh, in the near future when I get the chance. Just quickly on why I've gone with the larger amount of bench hanging over on this size, as opposed to what it would normally be, say for your tail vise end. Um, I wanted to maximize the workspace up here for this vise I'm going to build. Uh, the other big issue is I don't have the space in the shed to give myself that nice big workbench. But that's basically the reason why mine looks a bit little unorthodox, you might say. It's also confession time for me. Now, when I built my table, I built the two end pieces first, so it was easy to handle and I had the workspace to do it. Uh, I then did the glue up to get the, the long sides glued in. So these pieces with their mortise and tenon. Um, I didn't do the draw boring technique because of the amount of pieces I had to do in one go. It was a little bit overwhelming, so I just relied on the glue of the mortise and tenon, came back and dowed later, fogging up. The keen eye would have noticed early on, I actually put my dowels through this side where there is no tenon. Anyway, you know what I'm gonna say, I'm a dickhead. So it wasn't until I was actually in here showing my son what a mortise and tenon was and how it works that I realized that I didn't actually pin the tenon with the dowel. So now I've got these two nice dowels, decorative and symmetrical. Uh, so that's why that's there. Anyway, a couple of other things I've got left to do is get the bolts in underneath to pull this workbench in nice and tight against this rail. Um, another blunder that I made, so initially I only chamfered the edges that I knew um, would have access to my arms, etc. Um, and I left these ones nice and sharp, knowing that these were meant to meet up and have a beautiful crisp line. Um, just prior to glue up, I thought I've got to finish up all the chamfers on those other bits and I actually chamfered all these top edges. So what I've done to counter that both here and on the rail is I've put a chamfer there. So the gap does look big, uh, it's minimal. Uh, and in hindsight, I actually like this decorative any outy bit. So it's not a big deal. Alrighty, so I'm down here on the floor for no other reason, just so you can see the sliding dead man one more time. But I also wanted to just say, if you are getting into this whole woodworking thing, um, nothing is really out of your limit. So learn a heap of stuff as you go, tap into other people's resources, say good day to people, they're gonna help you out, as you can see um, from this video alone, okay? Uh, really do appreciate um, you tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, our uh, next video will be just on how I made that slab because there was actually a fair bit involved and it's probably the coolest slab that I've ever made. So I look forward to having you for that one. Okay, take it easy. See you later.